So we're, go we're going to go ahead and um, allow Epic. Hubbard, are you there? Oh, yes, I am. OK, great. Okay, so all right. Uh, I'd like to thank you for joining me today. I'd like to give a little talk about the EPIC program. Uh, so uh, let's begin. Uh, what is EPIC? Uh, basically, uh, EPIC, the English program in Korea, is an opportunity for native English speakers to come to Korea to teach inside the Korean public school system. Uh, you would be placed, or you can be placed inside elementary, middle, or high schools, or sometimes uh, in centers or English villages. But uh, most EPIC teachers, they do teach at the elementary grade school level. Uh, established in 1995, the EPIC program has been uh, ongoing. It's been going strong for the past uh, 25 years. Uh, since that time, we have uh, hired and trained and brought over uh, 10,000 teachers to work inside the public schools here in Korea. Uh, the main goal of the EPIC program is to get the students, the Korean students, interested in English. Uh, so uh, EPIC teachers mostly see their students only once a week, so it's really difficult for EPIC teachers to, uh, you know, effectively, you know, you know, drill and teach the students and like build off of like past lessons. So uh, more so than actually teaching, getting them interested in English so they pay attention in their other English classes with their Korean English teachers or, uh, you know, getting them interested so they study English outside of class. So that's pretty much the main goal uh, of the EPIC program. In addition to that, another important aspect of the EPIC program uh, is the cultural exchange uh, aspect. So. Uh, we want you to share your experiences, uh, you know, living in America to the Korean students so that they have a, I guess, a broader, you know, world view. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you learning from the Korean students, you know, the Korean culture, uh, and then, you know, going back to your home countries and sharing what you learned about Korea, uh, it's very important uh, for the continued growth and interest of uh, the EPIC program. So why come to Korea? Uh, so there are many reasons to come to Korea. Uh, these are just some of my personal uh, reasons. I'm sure your reasons for coming will be a little bit different. But the things that I like most uh, about Korea is that it's very safe. So never have I ever felt in danger, uh, even when I'm you know, out really late at night or have to go to work super early. Uh, everyone is just uh, very kind and polite and yeah, it's a really safe country to be in. Uh, in addition, the internet here is uh, very great. Uh, it's very fast and it's very cheap. So I did a, uh, a ping test, a uh, speed test uh, at my house earlier today. And basically it was uh, 660 uh, Mbps uh, for download and 780 up. So, uh, and this only cost me around $25 a month. So regardless of how much you stream or download, uh, there's never any like speed throttling, so uh, this yeah, I really really enjoy the internet here. So uh, next, uh, Korea uh, like the delivery system as far as like food, it's very uh, cheap and fast and it's really great. So even before the uh, advent of things like Uber Eats and whatnot, um, like McDonald's and KFC and Burger King, they had their own delivery services. So I always thought that was really uh, cool. Uh, in addition to that, uh, if you order things off like the Amazon equivalent here in Korea, uh, it's very fast. So if you order something in the afternoon, uh, it could very well be delivered to your house the very next morning. So oftentimes there's not any additional charges uh, and there, there is never any instances of your packages going missing. So porch pirates uh, aren't really a thing. Okay, uh, And then the next thing I like about Korea is uh, just simple things. Uh, there's no taxes. Uh, well, there is, but it's incorporated into the prices. So uh, whatever you see at the price tag, that's how much you're going to pay. And then tipping. You go to the barber, you take a taxi, uh, you do this, that, or the other thing. Uh, there's no, no tipping. So that's uh, relatively nice. Okay. Uh, and then uh, travel options. Uh, so maybe not so much now due to you know, COVID and the whole global pandemic, but uh, just geographically, uh, where Korea is located, 
Uh, it's very easy for ethnic teachers to travel abroad during the summer or winter recesses. So whether that's going to Japan or China or even Southeast Asian countries, uh, you can kind of consider Korea like a hub uh, where you can travel uh, relatively uh, easily. Okay? Uh, and in addition to traveling abroad, uh, traveling domestically is very uh, easy. So the public transportation here in Korea is very good and it's very fast and is very affordable. So uh, if you look at a map of Korea, Seoul, the capital, is in the, is in the northwestern part of the country. The second largest city, Busan, is in the southwestern part of the city. And you can get there uh, in roughly around two and a half hours, or under two and a half hours, using the uh, high-speed rail system here in Korea. Uh, and then um, in addition to uh, you know traveling to different places, uh, it's a good way to learn about uh, Korean culture. And so another thing that's good about Korea is they have many different festivals uh, throughout uh, the year. So uh, things like bamboo, peppers, fireworks, uh, ice, green tea, mud, and potatoes. Uh, believe it or not, these are all different festivals uh, here in South Korea. Okay. All right. And then uh, next is why uh, teach through the Epic program. Uh, the bottom line is that EPIC is very secure. Uh, your contract is guaranteed, and because we are part of uh, the government, uh, you know things are very reliable. So uh, there are two main ways that people come to Korea to teach. Uh, one is through the EPIC program, and the other is through uh, these private academies or these cram schools. They're called hagwons uh, here in uh, Korea. So the thing with Hagwons is that because they are businesses, if the business goes under, uh, they have no choice but to let you go. So there is only really one benefit for working uh, in a Hagwon as opposed to the Epic program, and that is as far as like your location is concerned. So uh, with the Hagwons, you're more able to choose a, a specific location. Let's say I want to teach in Seoul, or I want to teach in you know, Gangnam. Uh, you can work with different recruiters to work in that specific location, uh, but that's the only benefit. So for the EPIC program, uh, we recommend or we tell applicants they have to be flexible. So when you initially apply, uh, you can choose a preferred location you would like to go to, and then we'll try our best to get you a placement there. But if that doesn't work, then we will recommend you to another location or different locations until uh, hopefully we get someplace that wants uh, to hire you. But things like the pay, uh, vacation time, working hours, working conditions, support, training, uh, and like the stability, uh, nothing uh, really beats uh, the EPIC program. And so uh, EPIC is uh, uh, under the National Institute for International Education. So NIIED, runs many different uh, programs. So things like the talk program, which is our sister program, uh, as well as the topic test. And so uh, the test of proficiency in Korean. Uh, and lastly, uh, the other big thing that uh, NID runs is the uh, GKSP, which is the Global Korean Scholarship Program. So there are some uh, EPIC teachers who after they finish a year, they apply for the scholarship program. And what this program does is it will pay for your graduate school uh, here in Korea. So that's another option that uh, you may want to consider here uh, in Korea. Okay. And so uh, why uh, EPIC, you know, what do you get out of it? Um, the biggest thing I would say would be you know, the pay. So it ranges anywhere from 2 million to 2.7 million Korean won per month, uh, depending on your qualifications as well as where you want to uh, work. So usually the more provincial locations, the more rural locations, they offer more money because uh, more you know, epic teachers, they want to teach inside these uh, you know, larger cities. One thing to note though, is that Korea is very small and it's very densely populated. So it's roughly around maybe a quarter of the size of California, yet it has maybe 25% more of a population. So when, you know, if you are placed inside a provincial location, uh, you have to be in the mindset that it's not going to be completely rural, like farmlands for miles away. Uh, I was placed in many different provincial locations, and the towns and cities that I was living in had still populations of maybe 30 or 40,000 uh, people. And so, uh, yeah. 
Another benefit is that you do get uh, flight allowances. So how it works is if you do get accepted into this program, uh, when you fly in, initially you will be purchasing the ticket. Then depending on your contract, maybe one or six months later, you will receive 1.3 million won as an entrance allowance. Uh, one thing to note is that this is not a flight reimbursement, so it does not matter how much your ticket costs. If your flight ticket is cheaper than the, the, en than the entrance allowance, uh, you will get to uh, keep uh, the difference. And then similarly, when you finish the uh, program as well, uh, we will also give you 1.3 million won to fly back home uh, to your home country. All, right. All Epic teachers uh, get a free uh, place to stay. Uh, it's usually a, a one-room uh, apartment, or if you're lucky, uh, if you're in the more rural locations where rent isn't as cheap, uh, you can get maybe a two-bedroom place. I do know one person uh, in the rural location. She actually had a three-bedroom uh, apartment all to herself, which is really uh, nice. So uh, the rent will be paid, but things like maintenance fees and gas, electricity, all the other utilities uh, will be your responsibility. So, but usually, uh, it really isn't all that much. I would probably say every expense, like home-related, uh, maybe a hundred dollars a month. So it's really uh, not that expensive. And next, uh, you'll get a settlement allowance. So the first time that you come to Korea through the EPIC program, uh, we will give you 300,000 uh, Korean won uh, to help make your house a home. So if there's any things that you want, uh, you'll use this money to, uh, I guess, uh, spruce up your place to make it uh, unique uh, to you. Uh, in addition, uh, after you finish one year of teaching, uh, you will get severance pay, which is roughly equivalent to around one month's salary. So this accumulates as well. So if you decide to work for, let's say, two years and then leave, you'll get severance pay equal to around two months uh, of uh, your pay. And then U.S. citizens uh, can be exempt from paying uh, Korean taxes. Uh, for two years. So there is a uh, certain documentation that you'd have to provide to your school, uh, but you would be exempt. Uh, in addition, uh, you know, you'd also have to at least report your taxes to the, you know, the IRS, but uh, for expats or people living abroad, uh, there's a threshold where American citizens, if they earn, you know, less than this amount, you don't have to pay taxes, but you still have to report it. So Epic teachers, uh, we don't make a uh, we don't exceed that threshold, so I believe it's around like $80,000 or something to that effect. Uh, so basically for the first two years, you would not have to pay uh, American taxes or uh, Korean taxes. All right, if you are placed in uh, rural locations designated by your Office of Education, uh, you can get uh, uh, 100,000 won per month, maybe even more if you're on an island or whatnot. If you're teaching at two schools, you usually get an additional 100,000 won per month to help pay for any bus or transportation costs. Uh, three schools or more, an extra 150,000 uh, won per month. And then uh, as American citizens, you will have to contribute to the pension. Uh, so uh, around 4.5% of your paycheck will be deducted and then your school will match that amount and then put it inside a pension account. When you finally leave Korea for good, uh, all this money will be given uh, back to you. So if, let's say, uh, you teach only one year uh, in the EPIC program and you then you decide to leave, on that last month, you would get your last month's salary, you would get uh, the severance pay, you would get the pension refund, and you would get the, the flight ticket back home. So uh, if after you teach only one year, it's not uncommon for people to leave with that last month with maybe six or $7,000 as a nice bonus for you to uh, use when you get back uh, to your home country. Okay. Uh, in addition, I guess this is the biggest thing that I like about not only the EPIC program, but about Korea in general, is that uh, medical insurance uh, is uh, provided by the program. And in addition to that, the, the care is quite uh, good as well as uh, affordable. So I do know people who uh, you know, had to take an ambulance to the hospital, go to the ER, uh, and be treated. And fortunately, it wasn't anything severe, and it only cost around uh, $200 or so. But I have heard stories of, uh, you know, just taking an ambulance to the U.S. would cost around like $6,000 or something like that. So, um, yeah, the medical in insurance is a, a great benefit uh, for uh, working here in Korea. In addition to that, 
Uh, I guess this is another big difference between like Epic and Hagwons. Like usually for uh, Hagwons, these private, uh, you know, cram schools, once you get a job there, they'll just toss you immediately uh, into a classroom without really much, without any training. Uh, but for the Epic program, prior to you coming to Korea, uh, you will do an online pre-orientation course, as well as when you come to Korea before your contract starts, uh, we will do an on-site uh, training. And after you get to your school, there's additional training uh, as well, uh, a couple months into your teaching to help give you refreshers or give you additional like tips based on what grade level you'll be teaching. And then lastly is the uh, vacation days. So uh, you will get 26 days of vacation, working days of vacation. So roughly, if you include national holidays, uh, probably maybe like a month and a half uh, worth of vacation. Uh, in a given year. And sometimes uh, some Office of Education will or may give additional uh, vacation time if you renew your contract as well. Uh, some places uh, may not. But basically, uh, 26 days of vacation is the absolute minimum. Okay. As far as eligibility, who can uh, be a part of the program? Uh, the first thing is a citizenship requirement. So this is nothing that we control. Uh, this is the uh, Ministry of Justice and their immigration laws. So uh, anyone who's a citizen of the UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, South Africa, and the US uh, will be eligible to get the necessary E2 visa to work in South Korea. In addition to that, uh, there is documentation requirements for the visa. So we say, we say that uh, all teachers must have their diploma uh, six weeks before the start of the contract. So for this fall term, uh, you ideally would need to have your diploma in hand by the middle of July. Uh, I do know some uh, schools in California, typically the UC schools, uh, they give their diploma maybe three to four months after graduation. And so usually we tell those applicants that they'd have to reapply for or the, the following term. But I did get an email from uh, someone from the CS, uh, school, CSU school system, and they told me that it would roughly come around the middle of July if they're graduating you know, this term. This is not a, a set and hard deadline, but it's something that we try to enforce. Uh, if your diploma is going to come sometime in you know, July, I would still recommend uh, applying, and then you know, we can try to work something uh, out. Okay? So in addition to having all your documents ready, uh, Epic teachers who do not major in a field of education uh, must complete a TEFL course. So whether that's one offered by your school or an online TEFL course, so long as it's uh, 100 hours or more, uh, that would be perfectly fine. Uh, in addition, if you decide to work in Korea through our sister program, the TALK program, uh, if you work there for one year, uh, then that would also make you eligible for the Epic program should you uh, have already completed your bachelor degree. As far as the uh, application process is concerned, uh, the first thing that all applicants should do is to submit an application online. And so if you go to our website, www.epic.go.kr, uh, basically there's an apply now section. If you go to that section, you can, uh, they'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to apply. Right? And then after you submit an application, based on however many people submit an application uh, in front of you, uh, there could be, uh, you know, a little bit of a delay or a wait before we review your application and then get back to you, you know, with an interview if you do pass that a first round of screening. So after a Skype interview, if you pass that, you have to submit all the required documents that we need uh, to uh, basically, uh, yeah, once we get all the required documents, if everything's in order, if nothing's missing, uh, we'll send them to an office of education and then hopefully they'll review your documents they'll look, they'll like what they see and they'll tell us you know we want to hire this person and then when that happens uh that uh, it means your position is secured uh, or guaranteed now uh basically uh as far as like advice the only thing i can give you there's two real main advice and they kind of go hand in hand uh, with each other the first thing is to apply early and so for this current fall 2021 uh, term, uh, we already accepted applications starting on February 1st. So it's only been uh, less than two weeks and we already received uh, you know, several hundred uh, applications. And so I'm not going to say that you know, applying now 
uh, you know, it's too late. Uh, but, uh, you know, applying early will increase the likelihood of you actually getting a position uh, for this fall term. Uh, one thing to note is that usually uh, the fall intake is a lot less than the spring intake. The reason being is because the Korean public school system, their school year starts uh, in the spring term as opposed to the fall term. So it's opposite uh, of uh, the US. Um, and then, yeah, so applying early is uh, really important. And in addition, the whole application process is very like lengthy. And so even if you apply in, in the beginning of February, uh, you know, getting an interview would probably happen sometime in March or April, depending on, again, the number of people who apply ahead of you, uh, you know, collecting your documents, submitting them, and then finally getting final approval would be sometime in June or July. Then you would fly into Korea sometime in August for uh, the orientation. Uh, if you want to apply for the following uh, spring term, uh, spring 2022, then we'll begin accepting application forms on August 1st. So uh, basically, uh, February 1st is when you should uh, not